coming to you straight out of Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Brought to you by the Sioux Empire Podcast Network. This is the Indians. Welcome to the Urban Indians Podcast. I'm your host, Gabriel Nightshield, joined by Nathan Foote, Shannon Yellowback, and of course, Robert Mailing. Hi! <clears throat> it's our first of 2019, so it feels like we've been off forever now. Like it's, we've, it's been like a month or so since our last yeah, one, hasn't it? Just a month, yeah. Yeah, it's a long time. So, we had a couple like planned that we never did get a chance to do. Yeah. Just because of the holidays and it's everybody's tough. schedules being weird or whatever. So we never did get a chance to sort of wrap up 2018, which is what I wanted to do. Um, it was going to be a party. It was going to be a big party. <laughs> yeah. We had strippers lined up. I had to cancel yeah. them all. It sucked. Yeah, Male ones? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Male ones for Shannon. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I was trying to think of some cool, <laughs> cool stripper names, but Biff and I don't know. Or the old American gladiators, what were all their names? Like Inferno. Yeah. <laughs> Spike. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I couldn't make it, so I had to cancel it out, but I don't know. What'd you guys do for New Year's? Anything, anything exciting? See, I went to... Uh... They buy a bunch of stuff for the kids and just stayed at home and uh, pop a bunch of those poppers. The oh, yeah, those. Steady. Yeah. <laughs> Why they got to do one? See the big ass cannons, too. Like, poof! <laughs> <laughs> Tear the whole house up. <laughs> Vacuuming for weeks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Tear the whole house up with just one. Like, maybe this wasn't a good idea. <laughs> this year was like the first year in a long time that I went out. So that was. Yeah, fun. he was all over the internet. I yep. mean, probably was. <laughs> <laughs> Acting up somewhere. Yep. Ms. Mode. No. I, I was freaking walking in the tundra. I blame that on you. That was you. I don't know what happened. Somehow. Because I, I went out and I was at my homeboy's house and we were just having a few over there. And then everybody was at Tommy Jack's. So I was like, all right, I guess I'll head down there. So I took, took a ride down there. And then... um. Yeah, and then like er- everybody knew was there. Whatever, Shayna was there, and it was it was blackout mode after that. Well, we like, walked uh, up to Top Hat. Yeah, and we walked with like a group, and Nigel does not remember the group. I don't remember the Top Hat like <laughs> at all. For real? Yeah, like wow. I remember we were there. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> I remember we did go there, but I don't remember anything that happened there. Well, wow. we were trying to get a lift because after Top Hat it was closing or whatever, and we we're like, let's go to Gilberto's, and we we're trying to go eat. But the lifts were costing, they were like $16 for three blocks. Yeah. And we're like, not about that life. Yeah, $16 to go from Top Hat to Gilberto's. So we're like, nice show is being cheap. <laughs> I don't, I don't really walk like, them through. We walked. <laughs> wow. It was like a negative 30 that night. Fuck that shit. That's how I blame, that's, I blame, that's probably why I'm still sick right now. He was just, like, um. No, we can walk, we can walk, we can do it. Like, hyping me up, and I was like, I don't know. <laughs> it's really cold out. <laughs> and we, like, started walking, like, a block down, and I showed, like, fuck this. I'm ordering a lift. <laughs> 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 Falling, like, almost every second. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was rough. When, but we got there, and we yeah. ate, and it was good. Oh, my God, that line was horrible. Yeah, too. we had to wait, like, an hour to fucking get food. For real? Yeah. So like, I seen we, you guys as uh, post. Uh, yeah, it was like <clears throat> it was ridiculous. It was insane. Yeah. And some guy fell down. <laughs> <laughs> Who fell down? Some um big tall black guy. He was like In Gilberto's? Yeah, he was like walking <laughs> past like the line and trying to be like, Wow, I'm going, blah 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 and he yeah. was just like whoosh <laughs> <fall down. laughs> 
landed on his back. He was just <laughs> laying down there. And this girl that was with him, she was like, at least my phone's not broken. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. the dude's laying on the ground. Yeah. Yeah. He jumps up like nothing happened. His back was all wet. <laughs> That's how I had to do it, too. Like, nope. Remember that girl in line? She uh, was, like, just standing there, and she was, like, talking to her friends behind us. Uh-huh. And she, like, was standing in front of us. It was Sheldon, me, and Night Sheldon. She was, like, right here. And she was looking at her friends behind us, and she kept going like this. And her friends were like, I'm not going to cut. Yeah. I'm not cutting. Like, we can clearly hear them, and we can see her. Yeah. And she kept going like this, and Night Sheldon's like, you know we can see you, right? <laughs> <laughs> it was insane. I would have said, she said she's not going to cut. <laughs> uh, you can funny. cut back there. Yeah. <laughs> and she walked yeah. back all sad. That <laughs> uh, was good. I don't know. Yeah, that was a that was a rough night. I'm, didn't, and you, you said I got slapped that night, too, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> Damn, didn't you? He did. Uh, we, like, just got to Top Hat, and he was ordering a drink, and then he turned around because he had my drink and his beer. He turned around, and some girl was like, whoosh! And I was like... <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, I'm a gentleman. <laughs> nice. And I was like, what well, kind of drink? <clears throat> yeah, very classy. Yeah, I hit I hit her up after you told me that because I don't remember that at all. I she probably doesn't remember yeah, that either. Yeah, she's like I don't remember that. And then she yesterday had... she was really texting me too, because um, I I was asleep. I was sleeping like almost all day yesterday, and they were all trying to get me to go out and watch the games or whatever, and I wasn't having it. <clears throat> they all like did like a synchronized text like to me <laughs> or whatever, and then um, hers was like, "Where are you at? Like fuck you then or whatever." And then that I text her back later on when I woke up. I was like. I was like, that's why you slapped me the other night, huh? And then, <laughs> and she was like, I don't even remember that. I was like, yeah, right. I remember it. <laughs> I remember. Yeah. Don't even remember. Yeah. She, fell, remembers. Yeah. she <laughs> fell down like three times. Yeah. Like just standing there. So. Damn, for she, real? Yeah. She like stood up and she was like talking to Sheldon and Nayla and she like just disappeared. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Sheldon and Nayla were like, ah. <laughs> trying to grab her and pick her up. She's like, I have Bambi legs. That's funny as fuck. Bambi legs. Funny. <laughs> this always happens. Something always crazy happens whenever me and Nigel hang out. Yeah, it's, it's madness. Fun. Madness always. So, <clears throat> 2018. What? What? What's like your? What do you consider like your biggest accomplishment of the year? For me, actually. uh it's still in the process, but it's pretty much done getting this next album done. It's like, I suppose I have three videos done by the summer and I just slacked off, been lazy. So now, yeah. right towards the end, there, I stepped it up and got the whole album done. It's mixed and mastered. I just got to duplicate it. Yeah. Artwork is <clears throat> done. So to me, that was finally, oh, yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah. Should have been done by the summer, but. Oh, well, that's how it always goes down. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it's crazy. What about you, Shayna? Probably mm, just getting my life back in order. <laughs> yeah. Because, like, 2017, <clears throat> like, I had to move out of my house, do, like, huge life changes, basically. And just, like, getting back on my feet for me and my kids, like, that was, like, the biggest accomplishment yeah. last year, for sure. Yep. Because it was insane. I feel the same. Like, getting back to normal life <laughs> mm-hmm. after <clears throat> the years prior. But, yeah, it's probably mm-hmm. putting my album out. And then you know, we did some big shows, so that was pretty cool. Oh, yeah. And then... Yeah. Uh, Especially the Nally show. That, yeah. I, that for me, fun. that was actually probably up there with, with everything, too, because... Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> that was a fun night. Yeah, it was. <laughs> if, if, we, if Perkins would have been open, it would have been the perfect <laughs> night. <but>. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There are nights where Perkins isn't open in Brookings. In apparently, Brookings. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we My were God. super upset. It yeah. was horrible. Like, <laughs> yes. We were legit devastated. Yeah. because of this. It's like, had what? me sit in a park like, park for a while. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what kind of town is this? <laughs> it's not a real town. Yeah, <laughs> 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 yeah. Kind of college students don't go to eat at 
four in the morning. Because everyone knows college <laughs> keep a very regular schedule and yeah. not eat after dark. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> and the cops shut the after party down quick. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yep. Quick, dude. Didn't even let it get started. Yeah. By the time we got there, shit, it was already done. Yeah, I was playing music and everything. Looked over and everybody was gone. <laughs> what the fuck happened here? <laughs> Looked out in the lobby and cops everywhere. I was like, holy shit. I'm just going to tear down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah, that was fun, though. That's like goes up there with mine. One of the best ones. Yeah, that was a fun night. I don't know. I feel like it was a good year. I don't know. Hopefully we can keep 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 that momentum going or whatever. Yep. We got two native women in Congress now. They've been sworn oh, in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, that's, that's that was amazing. And then Deb Holland, she wore her um, native wear to get sworn in. <coughs> yeah. Awesome. Oh yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Hopefully they all like stand up and do some stuff and not just like be just another person in Congress. Yeah. You know. They need to do that little intro they did there. Where they would take grand, pretty much a grand entry just to walk in there and just to get sworn in. Oh, really? They mm-hmm. should, they should yeah. do that every time they go into the White yeah. House. You know? <laughs> yeah. They announce them as they come in, too. Who was uh, the senator, or was this was it a senator? But they were giving like a speech or something like that, and they were talking about how they were going to. They were talking about Donald Trump, and they were, we're going to go in there, and we're going to impeach that motherfucker. And it's, like, all over the news now that she said motherfucker or whatever. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I didn't even see the original story about who said it. Yeah. I just saw the memes that were uh, on, like, women's pages that were all like, don't worry, boys, impeaching the motherfucker is just girl locker room talk. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, I was like, how can anybody get fucking upset? Over, like, stuff that anybody says now, yeah. you know, after Donald Trump. Yeah, he, he really has, like, opened the Pandora's box. Like, my parents every once in a while be like, can you believe that so-and-so swore on TV show? I was like, do you know who's in the White House right now? Right, like, yeah. The rules are over. They are gone. <laughs> yeah. the, the whole, like, that's indecent is just, it's dead yeah. now. Yeah. It's dead now. <laughs> it's a free-for-all. Yep. Yeah, it's crazy. Fucking A. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I was seeing, like, I was trying to watch some uh, reports on that or whatever last night, and, like, people on, like, uh, Fox News and CNN were, like, saying how, like, it was just improper speech, and we shouldn't, you know, take that type of tone. I was like, I had to turn them off. I was like, I can't. This is just too ridiculous. It's fucking bullshit. (laughs) Like, trying to get upset over, you know, the word motherfucker, like like she killed a kid or something like that. It's like, who cares? I don't know. Stupid. Stupid. I don't know. So we can't take anything seriously on so the news does, anymore. Does anyone actually think anything's going to get better in 2018 on the whole political front? I feel like it's going to be so much worse because now it's like that you're going to have the Democrats just like investigating everything, but they don't yeah. have the Senate and they don't have quite the power yeah. to impeach him. So it's just going to be. It'll be like. <laughs> 2018, but with more noise. It yeah, like I don't think anything will happen. Really, I think I think Donald Trump will f- end out his uh, term. I don't know if he'll get elected again. There's probably a, like a good, very good chance he'll probably get elected. Yeah, I I honestly uh, believe. I mean, as much as America saying they hating him, I, I bet you he gets reelected, yeah. dude. I'm yeah, that's that's where I'm at because I I remember for uh, George W. Bush, everyone just being like so like, oh, he is the Evil, evil and he's the yeah. devil and yeah. he's just the worst thing and there's no way he's gonna win this and then he just like mopped the floor with Carrie and it was like yeah. oh that's how this, this works then they, yeah. the incumbent has a lot of goddamn power that's yeah. right <laughs> yeah yeah I don't see him getting impeached I don't know no it I don't would think be they got the stomach for it yeah yeah <laughs> it feels like the Democrats they just don't have the balls to really do anything like that the Republicans will talk shit and you know, we'll do whatever needs to get done, but the Democrats won't do that. They'll, they'll like, I don't know, try to take the high road all the time, and that's where you lose. <clears throat> I don't know. I think they just need to start playing dirty like the rest of them. Yep. For sure. 
So, what's some good things happening in 2018? <laughs> yeah. Anything? Yeah. Bueller. I don't know. 2019? <clears throat> or 20... Jesus Christ. <laughs> I have been fighting all week to up. not put yeah. 2018. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah, I, I have failed miserably in that. <laughs> I'm sure there's at least, like, three financial reports that went out from my desk that had 2018 on it. Uh, you get them all... I feel like you get them all again on, like, the first... Yeah, I, I I'm guessing most normal people would be like, yeah, the first week or so it's fine. I'm gonna be like, for like the first three months, you get a you get a pass on writing the wrong year. I had a couple, I like you know I work at a pharmacy or whatever, and I had a couple doctors prescriptions that were like January third, like 2018, and just um. I had to like <laughs> this isn't a valid script. You have to go get another one and for went real? out. You know, yeah, because it's like. That's true, though. Yeah, I mean, it's that like, sucks. And the doctor's <laughs> one that wrote it. <laughs> yeah. so, so, mad. so you actually have to read doctor handwriting? Oh, it's the well? worst. It's oh the my worst God. shit ever. Yeah. So if you figured out what the little bird symbol is, it's like reading hieroglyphs. <laughs> yeah, it's terrible. Like, it's it's like it's like they don't put any effort into it at There's, all. Like, I realize you're busy, but I mean, fuck. Like, try to make it a little bit legible so people can <laughs> fucking read it. Jesus. It's terrible. And they do just go like this. Well, and then, especially when you try to, like, read the actual, like, what the drug is they're trying oh, to... Oh, yeah. It's like, what is this? I don't even understand, like, what drug you're trying to prescribe. You have to call them, right? Yeah, <clears throat> that's the worst. Yeah. For real, you will have to call yeah, over. Yeah, uh, be like, uh, um, call over or, like, tell them to refax it or, like, you know, it's, yeah, it's fucking bullshit. Wow. <laughs> and then half the time you're, like, trying to figure out, like, what is this drug... And then who is this doctor? Like, you're trying to fucking match the two. Yeah, it's terrible. Yeah, that was sick. <clears throat> yeah. I don't know. That would bother me so much, because I'm like, everything has to be perfect in this handwriting, so then I'd be like, uh, has to go back, sorry. I don't know what <laughs> Yeah. <is>. Yeah. <clears throat> Just, yeah, it's the worst. It's the worst. I don't know. I want to give a shout out to those that are sick right now. You, yeah, you get better. Trust me. Hopefully, <laughs> these guys are not getting better. <laughs> it's been a week. Yeah, it's been a week. <clears throat> it's getting yeah. better though. Nice have faith, guys. More have faith. I feel like in the tundra. Yeah, that's yeah. That definitely didn't help matters. It didn't even dawn on me to like, like what day was that? Monday? Oh no, Tuesday. Like the day we head off, I thought I was just hanging over like super hardcore, mm-hmm. and then fucking like late in the day I was like wait I think I'm sick cause like I don't usually like <laughs> hang over like this hard like an all day <laughs> wait yeah <clears throat> I was like wait I might be sick instead of just hung over and I was like fuck this is bullshit and then yeah it just got it went from like a like a strep throat to like a sinus infection yeah. Yeah. and then yeah it's just the story yeah. yeah as we're all locked oh, in this room got yeah. you, got you, <laughs> my show's like I'm sick I was like I am perfect I'm just fine like, yeah. and, <clears throat> and he had like the thickest coat on too when we were walking it was the worst and I had this one on <laughs> like serious? it's so thin and I was like freezing on the way That's there it's a windbreaker it, yeah basically <laughs> it was horrible yeah <laughs> rough night but yeah it gets better guys <laughs> <laughs> It don't seem like it when you're going through it. <laughs> You'll look back better. fondly. You'll be like, remember that time I was sick? Remember that time I was sick? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Dude, I was like dizzy. Yeah. Everything, man. I couldn't. Yeah, I'm guessing you guys had what I had over Christmas week. It just ruined everything. It's like, I barely got any like Christmas dinner. I got like a yeah. little cup of homemade ice cream. Normally, I just like binge like a motherfucker. Yeah, yeah. That's like my that's like my Ragnarok or Valhalla or whatever. I just like <laughs> eat, eat, eat all through Christmas. Yeah, and nothing this year. I feel uh, so robbed. Yeah, <laughs> it's the worst. <laughs> yeah, homemade ice cream. Oh, yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. I, I make really good homemade ice cream. Awesome. How do you do that? We do, because uh, most people just do, like, the, the sugar and the milk and the cr- cream and all that that kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, my mom and I will work together, and she'll do, like, a pudding that she won't... It's like a sp- old recipe where you, like, don't let it get a skin, and then so you put plastic over top of it, and, like, you let it sit in the cold garage overnight, mm-hmm. and then you, like, mix that with some other stuff, like, as it turns, and then immediately, like, throw it in the... Uh, homemade ice cream machine. Really? Awesome. Freeze it fast. <clears throat> yeah. Oh my god, it's good. That Damn it, no, I want ice cream. Sounds like something yeah. I want to try out. Ice cream. Yeah, cooking with Gabe. That's the next day. Oh, we should do that. Right. A, very spe- a very special, very cold episode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. 
That would be cool. Yeah, first you need an ice cream maker. Yeah, true. I, I think I could arrange that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah one of these days. Be, I definitely be. want to try that. I mean, seriously. <laughs> yeah, it sounds <clears throat> delicious. Just sitting here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it'd be fun. <laughs> As far as good things in 2019, uh, Avengers Endgame. That's oh man, that's all I'm worried about. And anything else? Like I don't, I don't care. <laughs> so what? What? The, what's the date that comes out? Sometime in May or something like that? It's April so like, 26th. Oh wow, that early. Yeah. So Captain Marvel's gonna come out basically like, like next right month. on top of it yeah. almost. Yeah. Yeah, Captain wow. Marvel is like February sixth or something like that i don't know i don't know the date really on that but. so let me ask a question being and i'm not really a spider-man kind of guy you know but <laughs> Gabe let you on this podcast <laughs> but, but being being that is being said i went and saw venom you know and i really wasn't impressed yeah the movie is terrible yeah I, okay that's what i was getting to yeah. is that Something like you mm, expect no. from Venom? Or? Awful. No. Okay. It's terrible. Cool. See, what, what's funny is it, it seems to be a split camp because the other most fanatical Spider Man fan that I know here in Sioux Falls mm. liked it. Mm, he's wrong. Yeah, because yeah, I, I heard a lot of good about it. You heard it here, Sean. It. Yeah. yeah, I heard a lot of good about it. So I was like, me and, me and the wife and the kids went and checked it out, you know, and I fell asleep through it. I'm not going to yeah, lie. It's not I good. liked it. Me and Maniac went and watched it like that weekend it came out, and uh, we were both just like, "This is the worst ever." <laughs> <laughs> and usually he'll like movies that I don't like, uh, but yeah, he he agreed that it was just Russell on Facebook agree, agrees Venom sucked. Yeah, good. That's what's up. Yeah, Russ knows what's up. <clears throat> yeah, that's like it's like they were trying to be too com- com- <laughs> comedy okay. with it or something. Yeah, I don't. I don't. The get worst it, thing about the fact that that movie even exists. Is that now we won't get Venom in like the MCU, like in like so you won't see Venom with like Iron Man or Captain America or fighting the real Spider Man. Oh really? It'll just be off in this little pocket world where you know none of that exists. Which means he's going to be fighting other symbiotes. Yeah, it's very limiting. Yeah, it's so dumb because like the end of that movie, he's fighting like a symbiote that like has all of like Carnage's powers or whatever. And then they set up like Carnage at the at the fucking end of the that movie, and it's like, so didn't we just fucking see that? So next movie's just gonna be the same with just a red symbiote. Yep. Yeah, it's fucking stupid. Yeah, I don't know. It really made me mad. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even like know the comic or anything. Like I know nothing about it, so that's probably why I liked it. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> well, I, I'm going based off of when you see Venom with Spider Man and they're like fighting in regular movies and shit. And yeah. That ain't this yeah, one ain't based on nothing like that. It's like he's trying to be too funny, you know, Venom is or something or Yeah, it was it's, silly. It's I watched it when it when it first came out and then I watched it again on Voodoo like a couple weeks ago and I was like, Well maybe maybe, maybe it's just, a little bit better than what I thought. Maybe the second round. Yeah, it's like you know, Let me try this it was again. Awful. You really wanted to like <laughs> Yeah, I wanted to <laughs> I wanted to at least be like, okay, I mean, <coughs> Venom, right. he looked cool, like, you yeah. know, he yeah. looked cool, but other than that, it was just all the way bad. I don't know. I'm like, if a movie makes me laugh, and I'm like, yeah, it was pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> I kept thinking it was probably going to be a long-ass movie, because, you know, I was like, it's, it, this is just leading up to something, you know? <laughs> yeah. And it never yeah. did, it's kind of, like, yeah. just there, you know, like, okay. Yeah, it was like, and then the end fight is like a Transformers end fight where it's just, you don't really know what the fuck's <laughs> happening. It's just a bunch of blobs of CGI just going at it. Yeah. You yeah. just try to yeah. imagine what it looked like in real life where it was like two guys in green bodies doing <laughs> yeah. ping pong balls, like yeah. waving sticks at each other. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's funny. You ever see like those, like the the before CGI of like, uh, like of what's his name doing Thanos or whatever, and he's just got like this big, like, head like on top and that's where they're all looking at but like um yeah I don't know. oh yeah Way down here. oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's goofy it, yeah. I, I remember seeing something for uh not this one age of ultron they had a, a special that showed a bunch of the like green screen work yeah and it was just kind of like thor's like doing this on a green screen <laughs> and then he's like on the ground like this on a green screen yeah. and he must have been falling or flying or something <laughs> yeah. and it was just like it looks ridiculous seeing like the guy that uh, does the the rocket raccoon cgi 
is hilarious because he's just like this little guy just like scrouched down and are you yeah. serious <laughs> <laughs> yeah that'd be hard <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought he just they just did full CG. I didn't realize they had a guy in motion capture for yeah. that. Holy crap. Yeah. It's, yeah. Had a it's, crazy. it's actually um James Gunn, the guy that directed the first two. Um yeah. he is brother. No um, kidding. Yeah, it does. And he's in the movie too. Um he's one of the not the main guardians, but the guy that Craglin or whatever his name is. Um, okay. He's in there. Like um He's at the end. Of, he has that Yondu's whistle yep. at the end, and he shoots. Yeah, it I know the guy you're talking about. Yeah, so that's his okay. brother. Yeah, he does the motion capture for. Uh, that's Rocky awesome. Rocky. Yeah. I want, so I wonder if that's if he's gone now, or if he gets. To yeah, I wonder the whole... if they'll even have a Guardians three. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, it's weird. I don't know. I wasn't too big of a fan of the Guardians to begin with, but. I liked it. I liked it too. It I mean, I'm not it saying it made me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty good. Yeah. yeah. It made me laugh too. I'm just saying they're not my not favorites. Favorite. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm not like bent over backwards. Like, man, that was the greatest thing ever. But yeah. I enjoyed them. I yeah, yeah. Saw them. Yeah, for sure. I, if the next one comes out, I'll be there opening night first thing. But yeah, it's not my favorite shit. It's the shit I always skip when I rewatch Infinity War for the fifteenth time or whatever. Actually, fifteen is like underplaying it, but yeah. On, on, a of, <laughs> on a scale, on a scale of the like '80s 15. Aquaman cartoon yeah. to Spider-Man: Homecoming, where does it fall? <laughs> it's man, I've seen fucking Infinity War like probably legit, probably like good thirty to forty times now. It's stupid the amount, of, and I, I'll just I'll skip through it like. Oh, it's it's always like you when just I have favorite parts. Yeah, you like I'll watch, watch the fights and the, like, <laughs> like I'll come home drunk and I'll be like, all right, what am I gonna watch? <laughs> and it's I don't like, like this part. <laughs> well, it's all, I always try to whenever I come home and I'm drunk, I always want to watch something that I don't have to think about because then, like the next day, I'll be like, oh, I didn't even, I don't remember anything that happened, so I won't watch any of the shows that I'm like binging at the moment or whatever because I won't remember it, and then. So I just turn on Infinity War and I watch the opening fight or the end fight. And <laughs> it's just it's not funny that you like are fast forwarding through this movie so you can go to sleep. Yeah. Well, no, no. It just <laughs> usually I'm like cooking a pizza or fucking something's going on and yeah. <laughs> Which uh, brings me to one thing I decided last night was I'm gonna try to try to do sober January. So I'm gonna try to do. Ooh. Just be sober for the whole month and uh, try to. I don't know. That's how I feel today. What is it, January 6th? So, I mean. Yeah, but you just got done being six. That's why you're he's talking still like sick. that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Ru- Russell on Facebook <clears throat> wants to know Gabe, did you cry when you first watched Infinity War? Yes, several times. I cried. <laughs> several times. I cried when, so many times. When Tony movie, gets fucking insane. stabbed, I almost fucking lost it. When Peter fucking died. <laughs> oh my okay, god. Okay, I, I, so I almost cried when Peter died. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, <laughs> Peter was so convincing. Was like, yeah. It was way too like watching a little kid die in your arms. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Jesus Christ! I don't <laughs> yeah. want to die. Whenever fucking uh, when Thor comes out of nowhere, I was like, a lot of tears are like, oh my god, this is so awesome. Like, I can't believe this. I'm watching this. I'm crying. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I always like to think about trying to explain <laughs> things to people like in the past. And can yeah. you imagine like where comic book culture and stuff like that wasn't... Can you imagine trying to explain to someone yeah. in the 80s yeah. that the biggest movie event that like moves people to tears in the yeah. theater is like <laughs> this comic book that's floating around called Infinity War right, with a yeah. big purple guy. And <laughs> this is like, it's high art and will probably yeah. win Best Picture. What the fuck is <laughs> Okay. Yeah, yeah. And there's a talking raccoon. Sure, buddy. <laughs> yeah, I. Um, I didn't cry. I didn't really cry when Gamora died. I cried no, more no. like whenever he was asking him what he did to Gamora. Yeah. Or where Gamora was. Yep. Yeah, my wife and <clears throat> daughter was bawling her eyeballs out when Peter died. <laughs> bawling. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, like, and what? then my <clears throat> son, like, I cannot watch movies with my son because if there's a part that's gonna make me cry, he's like. <laughs> Are you crying? Yeah. Oh, that's pretty much me right there. That's what Larry says too. Yeah, that's pretty much. I'm always me like, too, yes, right leave me alone. Yeah. I'll, Watch be in, the movie. I'll be in the theater yeah. focusing, like you're crying. So uh, exactly what he does. Lakota says, Gabe, I remember that we yes. both got choked. Up. <clears throat> yep, I was. That's who I, I Cody. I watched Infinity War for the first time with her in Albuquerque, 
I was I knew I was sitting there with her, so I was trying to be cool. <laughs> Help that crowd. Yeah. So I was really sitting there like trying to hold it together, like, yep, yep. And then just one tear just slowly coming down. Whip <laughs> quivering. Yeah. Should have said a poet. Yeah. yeah. Off, like, <laughs> <laughs> it's hot in here, right? <laughs> okay, that was yeah. that was way too rehearsed. Yeah. Like you've actually done that. Yeah. yeah. It's fucking hot. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> There's no eye drops. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> and, and, and Russell admits that he also cried when uh, Peter died. Yeah. I feel like you don't have a soul if you didn't cry when Peter died. Seriously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maybe there's something yeah. wrong with you. I was like, yeah. man, they just killed off Peter. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. what shocked me about that movie so much was that it's like, that was really bold because it was like everybody that you kind of knew the old guard that are kind of yeah. like the, the actors that are kind of getting done with this and then you got this fresh new faces like, yeah. you know, this is right after Black Panther just like destroyed the box office <laughs> yeah. and Whoosh. Yeah. Oh, spoilers, by the way. And, uh, <laughs> you know, like 45 minutes late, but yeah. Yeah. But I was just like, the, I, when that happened, I was just like, oh, no fucking, I think I said that out yeah. loud. I was like, no, because I watched it by myself. I was like, no fucking way. Yeah. And then Peter and all this, like, okay, so they killed all the new guys. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It was a bold move. That just means that, like, the next movie is for real is going to, it will be, like, for sure, probably Tony and uh, Steve's, like, last outing or whatever so that oh, what's going on now why would you say so uh, oh. uh, this is on a little bit of a delay on this screen but <clears throat> Lakota says the air is too dry in Albuquerque it's making my ice water yeah yeah that's, that's accurate that's, <laughs> they say that's not cool yeah air. when we go see Endgame because that's it'll come out the day um, Endgame comes out the day of the first day of Gathering of Nations or whatever <laughs> so I'm sure I'll be down there again and we'll go watch it again, and that's that's gonna be the word. That's, that's gonna, gonna be, be the phrase I use. This air is super dry, huh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> your throat. Yeah. With the airplane and the depression. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Call in. Uh, yeah. Ozone. Uh, yeah. Yeah. With all the excuses. Yeah. <laughs> Ain't you see this for me? Yeah. <laughs> uh, funny. Yeah. But yeah, good flick. I've seen it a million times. I've seen it a lot. <laughs> yeah. We own it, so I watch it a lot. Yeah. And I have all boys, so... Oh, man. <clears throat> it's so. like, it was on, like, whenever we first bought it, it was on for, like, a straight two days. Repeat. Yeah. yeah, on repeat. <laughs> like, those boys know exactly what happens, what time, yep. how long it happens. Like, they know <laughs> that movie by heart. It's good. You're raising them right. <laughs> <laughs> There was a part on, uh, have you, you seen Into the Spider-Verse yet, Robert? I have not. I, it's good. I really um, want to see it. I've heard lots of good things. Yeah, really good things it's really good. But there's a part in there that um, I went in w with Lyric, and Lyric was even into it, which normally she tries to play too cool for my shit or whatever. Yep. And then um, <clears throat> there's a part in there that I got a little bit choked up on, and I could feel Lyric just, like, looking at me like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's like, look that way. Look that way. Yeah, it's more awkward at that time as a like, God, what was I, sixteen year old, and I went with my parents to Starship Troopers and had no idea that the co-ed shower scene was coming up. So oh, yeah, it's like, it's like my mom's on one side, my dad's on the other side, and it's like co-ed shower scene. I'm just like, <laughs> yeah, awkward. <laughs> I remember seeing a. Uh, Jerry Maguire with my mom and there's that scene in the beginning when Tom Cruise is just handling his business on the, with that chick and she's like just, and I was like oh my god and I was like with my mom and like, like <laughs> I don't know what to did do did your mom say anything? My, I, don't, I don't know I don't remember but I remember being mortified that I was sitting next to my mom like, watching that anytime there's something like inappropriate and Jacob's with me like I know he's getting big but I'm mm -hmm. still like cover your eyes yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what, yeah. you'll probably be doing that when he's 30 he'll be like yeah. cover your eyes I still will we, <laughs> we did that we rented that movie with, I don't know I can't remember what it's called but it's <clears throat> Jim Carrey it's out on Redbox oh um 
But it, uh, yeah, we put it in and we told the kids, "Come on, it's we're watching the movie. Let's go." <laughs> Just put it in, start watching. In the first scene, they're all boning and <laughs> a whole bunch of people having sex, and we looked over like, "What the?" <laughs> looking at us like, "What are you <laughs> making us watch?" Yeah, cover your eyes. This ain't for you guys. Just get out of here. <laughs> One time we were watching a a movie. I can't remember what what it was. I think it might have been no. I don't know. I don't know what it was. It was recently. But uh, it was me and Lyric and one of Lyric's friends, and uh, <laughs> the movie like froze up on like the screen, <laughs> just right in the middle of like a fucked up scene. It was like, oh hell no! <laughs> like, it was like, oh, go in your room, girls. <laughs> just gonna shut it off and we'll shut it off. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's the worst. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, it was rough. <laughs> It's like that. Yep. It's crazy. And my son, like, knows, too, because he'll, like, cover up, and he'll be like, is it done yet? <laughs> yeah. Like, not yet. Hold on. Yeah. <laughs> You're taking a long time. They're going for round two. Hold up. <laughs> They're taking a long time. <laughs> I'm like, ah, oh, just fast forward it. He'll be all mad. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm not fast forwarding it. <laughs> I'm like, why is it remote? <laughs> yeah. She put it in a slow mo. I'm like, freaking out. <laughs> uh, that's the worst. <laughs> I just feel like, I don't know. I probably feel just like as embarrassed as my son, too. So I'm like, I yeah. Know. Yeah, it's uncomfortable for everybody it involved. Is. <laughs> it is, yeah. For real. Being in the position of the kid and now of the dad. It's. <laughs> Just all the way uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah. I remember once when I was young too, like one of my earliest memories. I haven't seen this movie in forever either, so I don't even remember what part it was. But Born on the Fourth of July, another Tom Cruise movie. There was some nudity in there which I don't remember, but I remember my mom being like, "Cover your eyes," and like I was like really like this and like really like trying to like peek through. And <laughs> I don't. <Open>. <laughs> I don't remember what the scene was, but I just remember that happening. And <laughs> Cover your eyes. Yeah. <laughs> I can hear you say that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's rough. Hi, Brandy. <laughs> uh, it's crazy. Yeah. Fucking. They don't have that much nude scenes in movies anymore, though. I don't know. That's what movie now it's all on TV. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Our, uh, Game you know, of like Thrones. Premium TV, <clears throat> yeah. I've been binging Game of Thrones, and like I kind of like want to break like what make Lyric come out and watch it with me sometimes like I don't know what's happening in the next scene so but it's probably not a good idea but yeah there's a lot of fucking nudity in that it, shit it, it ebbs really? and flows because mm-hmm. you like you know Game of Thrones is like and like the premium TV shows like American Gods stuff like that yeah. they all have to have like the most nudity and like super graphic stuff because that's where all the adults have fled to now yeah. that movies are all comic <clears throat> books yeah uh, but uh, you know the 70s kind of had this like Spike, I remember, like, right about the time the first Dirty Harry movie came out. Well, I don't remember. I was alive then. But <laughs> yeah. I, re- I know of, <clears throat> like, Dirty Harry, there's just, like, a random nude scene. It, it even, like, the early 90s, like, Demolition Man, where there's just, like, for no reason, a wrong number on a video phone. Where yeah. The woman's, like, completely naked in the show, and she's like, oh, wrong number! And just, <laughs> yeah. just, like, for no reason in the middle of a, a scene in the show. Yeah. Just, like, be- because they can. <laughs> yeah, right. <clears throat> I suppose if I was going to make a movie, there'd be some random nudity in there, too. Just you running by. <laughs> <laughs> like, what the hell? Like, not part of the story, but just yeah. Dave run by. That's fucking Peter Griffin. What's going on over there? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <clears throat> yep. Okay, clean it up. My mom just logged on. She's watching. Oh, all right. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> so, so have you ever seen those recipes? <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> we never did do our like our whatever we do our pie making thing or whatever. I know. I'm not making pie. I will bring ice cream. Hey, did you make that um, fry bread for that thing or whatever? Oh yeah. No, I didn't. Oh, we knew it. Mm-mm. Yeah, we, it was, I yeah. wasn't even there. I know yeah, these ones tasted good. So. <laughs> <laughs> Were they though? Just kidding. <laughs> no, they didn't taste good. I was just kidding. <laughs> Don't say that. People could there be was watching. somebody had like a big ass, like, uh, 
<laughs> what do you call it? Like one of those like big like you know those sacks that you, they haul like dirt in and shit like that. Mm-hmm. Like the big ass sack like that full of fry bread. Carried away. Yeah, I was like, fuck. You worked like two days straight. <laughs> right. <laughs> Like, holy I was fuck. gonna take it home, but somebody beat me to it. <laughs> Just grab that giant bag. No, they emptied the bag. <laughs> really? Yeah, they put it somewhere. I'm like, I'm gonna take some of that. Went, look, the bag is empty. I'm like, it's just full. <laughs> like overflowing. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of a, a mom's safe story to tell, so you know, I mentioned I was sick all through the holidays, and that I like usually eat like a f- freaking crazy person. Yeah. And. uh this year, because all the little kids, also all the nieces and nephews now, and the, her grandkids, all really love the little fresh-made rolls. Yeah. So she made, like, three times as many as she's ever made. But that's, like, my signature thing that I, like, everything I eat with a roll. So, like, <laughs> yeah. there's, like, a whole pan of them I'll eat for me. And so I was sick. I was out of the game. And so I come upstairs at one point, and someone's just kind of like, you know, there's just, like, this table full of bags of rolls she's sitting home with people because she's got too many because she yeah. made like twice as many and everyone's just like well we just figured we didn't know you made more we just figured Rob was sick <laughs> <laughs> yeah. had all these surplus rolls <laughs> yeah. that's it's, like my favorite <clears throat> thing to make too is homemade rolls because I'm like yes <laughs> I feel like a meal isn't complete without a good dinner roll seriously yeah, Dude, yeah. now that I'm not sick though <laughs> You're still sick. You just sound sick. Oh, I sound like you, but he's not sick. He's just contagious. <laughs> <laughs> Important yeah. distinction. Like, now that I get, a, brand new now that I get, a, get out the house and stuff, I want to see all this new people. <laughs> Let's see all what the world like. What are you sick for? <laughs> Well, all, they do, all these New Year's resolutions. Oh, New Year's me, not yeah. me. I want to see all these new people's. Yep. My Russell life. says his New Year's resolution for 2019 is that he wants to see his first Night Shield show. Yeah, man. You should come up for my birthday. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's going to be a state that. darts th- that weekend, so February. a lot of the boys from back home will be up. And February 22nd. Yeah. It's going to be a good one. <clears throat> yep. It'll be, it'll be good. Good times. Yeah. It'll be crazy. I think, I think I'm going to go on early that night so I can just get I it over just with. <laughs> <laughs> you, say it, you say it all the time, but you never go on early. Yeah, I, th- I'm, I think I'm going to. I, w- I was planning on it in Flandreau, too, but then they made me do a longer set, and then I was like, all right, well, fuck it. Dude, Flandreau was actually jumping. Flandreau was we, fun as fuck. I we we got there. that building <clears throat> jumping. Man. That was yeah. crazy. That, yeah. that turn, the turnout was nice, too, man. Yeah got pretty packed in it. Uh-oh. We're being asked by Lakota if we have resolutions. Um, <clears throat> I don't know. Hmm. Actually, yes. What? I'm old school like everybody else. I want to get skinny. <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah. that's <clears throat> one of my actual... It was last year's too, and then I just kind of fell off on it, and now yeah. this year I actually want to... That's sort of like the what's behind my sober January thing. Oh, Cause like real? man, I fucking look at like pictures from like even like the beginning of like last year. I'm like before I was like, I don't know, back to normal life or whatever. And like I lost all the weight I lost when I was in all that trouble. Like I just yeah. gained it right back. Was well, like, then, uh, then you had to walk everywhere. Though. Yeah, so I had to walk a million that's, miles a fucking day. Maybe that's a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it was. Yeah, it was rough. And it, like just not drinking like that. It's so much like not. Uh, well, when or you go from not drinking whatever. to like drinking, yeah, like the past five days, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a yeah. lot. Yeah, so I don't know. I think that's my resolution too is to lose weight again because I know I can do it, obviously, but I just need to have the willpower to yeah to do. No, it. I mean, that's where my is <clears> in. I, I like, talk about it, but as soon as that I'm willpower so bad comes, at resolutions. I don't have it. It's horrible. Yeah, like. Oh, my resolution is to, like, stay not smoking, because that's, like, one of my biggest things. Well, that's a tough one. It is. I quit in September. Uh, you're still not, that you're still not smoking? I still haven't, it's like... It's not that tough. I'll smoke. <laughs> I will smoke, like, when I'm drinking. Like, yeah. if somebody else has a cigarette, I'll have a cigarette with them. But I haven't bought my own pack since September. Well, next that's time I see But it, I right? probably gained, like, 20 pounds of since really? September, like guaranteed. How how does it? This is my ignorance. It's here. like part of like, my boredom thing. So, but I mean, how does like smoking make you make, make you, you cooler? <laughs> <laughs> hey, 
Hey, everyone knows it's scientifically established. Smoking makes you cool. Yeah. <laughs> Remember that. Case. That's why I started. <laughs> But I mean, like, what what is it about smoking that makes you, uh, or not smoking, makes you gain weight? Just because, like, you need, like, you start eating more? Because I because... need to do something. Oh, like, okay. Because if I'm, like, bored or if I get stressed out or anything, I would mm-hmm. go smoke. And nicotine like, is now an that appetite I'm, suppressant. Like, oh, now yeah. that I'm, like, yeah. bored, it literally is, though. when I'm bored or when I get stressed out, I'll be like, let me just go order some wings. Let me, yeah. I need some pizza. Like, yeah. just... <clears throat> random little oh, things it, like then. that. I'm gonna start smoking then. Yeah, that's right? What I was, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> Who needs like, exercise? What if I start smoking again? I'm I think that would be my way. 2019 resolution. Start smoking to get skinny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There it yeah. is. Fucking yeah. A. Let's just all just smart, yeah, start smoking. That's just one of my yeah. resolutions. Just to, like, the next podcast sponsored by Horrible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the next show will just be all outside just fucking taking drags. <laughs> 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 yeah. They should be skinny. Yeah. Coffee Welcome to the Cigar down. Lounge Podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Have that big fucking wooden Indian. Remember uh, from Creep Show? What was that? Old Chief Woodenhead? <laughs> I don't know. I know what you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cigar store Indian, whatever. Yeah. He's just chilling like this. Yeah. I think every cigar store has one. Yeah. <laughs> Wasn't there like an episode of Seinfeld too? Yeah. yeah. Where Seinfeld bought that. That's like where movie. I remember it from. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he bought that. Indian for that girl and she was native and she got all pissed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean yeah. I like wouldn't even know like <clears throat> if I should be mad or if I should be like, This is pretty cool. Yeah. Like, I'm like I don't know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> like I'd be mad are you you just get this for me because 'cause I'm native? Yeah. And then I'd be like, But it's kinda cool, so But many <laughs> <laughs> But many thinks <laughs> You act, anyway. you act pissed so that you get the bonus gift afterwards yeah. and yeah, you yeah. Get for it. But you keep the first one. <laughs> Look, Russell said he's there, bro. Yeah, hell yeah. That'd be dope, man. Come on through. Come on through, shit. I wanted to... I made this post. This was going to be on like a show that we did like a while back. But um, for whatever reason, we got canceled or whatever. But um, I want to add it into the, the regular like part of the show where we talk about like the reziest shit like <laughs> you've either ever seen or like in the past two weeks that you've seen so like going forward it might not be as cool because i mean we might not see like some resi ass shit like every fucking week or whatever or we could just talk about someone else's stories i suppose but like what would uh <clears throat> what do you think like what was your resiest shit of 2018 hmm. either that you were like directly involved in or that like you heard about or whatever don't look at me. Like, <laughs> like I know resist. you got a story. Like I'm busy as fuck. That's true. Cameras pissed. don't even have a Zoom. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I know everyone's just staring at me. Like, 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 even God everybody pissed. online just looked closer at me. <laughs> like this. Take him. <laughs> That's fucked up, man. Uh, <laughs> That's <okay>. true. Lakota <laughs> said, "Wait till tax time." Yeah. Like one hundred percent true. Yeah. Um, well, I work downtown, and oh, that's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> there was like some lady who came up and she was complaining <clears throat> about a sandwich that she ordered. So I like went, o- had to go around the counter and go talk to her about her sandwich, and I like happened to notice that. One of my guest service reps is, like, freaking out. And I'm, like, trying to, like, concentrate on this lady and her sandwich complaint. But at the same time, this, like, she's running, calling the cops, took off (laughs) from the front desk, like, went around, and then I seen her run towards, like, the bathroom area, and I was like, oh, my God. (laughs) Something's going on. And I'm like, I'm so sorry about your sandwich. Like, do you want me to pay for it? We can cover it. And she's like, no. Like, she just wanted to complain wow. to somebody yeah. about her sandwich. Like, okay, <coughs> wonderful. And then I had to, like, run around because if any one of the phones in the entire hotel call 911, it'll ring in the back to alert everybody. So, like, there's an alarm going off in the back. Huh. So I had to, like, go in the back, shut that alarm off, run around, and then I had to go see why they were calling the cops. Because some guy went into the women's restaurant restroom and freaking was like butt ass naked <laughs> washing his clothes in the sink 
In the women's bathroom? In the women's bathroom. <clears throat> and I don't think Fuck. he knew it was the women's bathroom cause until one of the housekeepers went in there. And she was like, he's naked, someone call the cops. Like, <laughs> that's why it, like, it was like outrageous he's there naked. for like two minutes. Cause what was wrong like, with your clothes? Running around. He freaking pooped all over the bathroom. <laughs> oh, no. I was like, oh my gosh. I was like, I'm not going in there because I can smell it. And I was like, no. Standing so I was at waiting. the front desk and smell it. But as soon as he <laughs> seen like the housekeeper come in there and he realized it was the women's bathroom, he like grabbed his stuff and walked across the hall to the men's bathroom. Oh, naked? I was like, oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> like butt ass naked. And then the cops got here, and like one of the cops went in, and he was like, "Come on, man!" Like, <laughs> I'm just here, like, give a brother a break. Fuck. I know, Clearly, he shit his pants or something. It was like. Sunday at two o'clock <laughs> he was like, in no, the just... afternoon. Like, it wasn't even like in the middle of the night or anything. It was just Sunday at two o'clock. No, this just didn't go to that level. But exactly what we thought. I was man. like, "Oh my gosh!" And then. I was like, I don't know if he's, like, washing his clothes or what happened. I was like, but there's poop all over the floor in the women's bathroom. And he was like, he doesn't, like, I don't think there's any poop on his clothes. I was like, because he was washing them, yeah. like, <laughs> in the sink. And he comes out, and he freaking has, like, girl sandals on, has his toenails painted. And I'm like, oh, oh my no. God. And then he goes, I'm sorry, ma'am. <laughs> like, I was like... Did he get arrested? Yeah. <laughs> and I tra- like I can trespass people from the hotel, so I had to trespass him so he can't come back to the hotel. Yeah. And if he does, then I can call the cops and he'll get arrested for like just being on property. Yeah. But I- it was <clears throat> insane. I was like, this is like... Was it a native cr- dude? It was a native dude. Oh, oh man. <laughs> Why did you even ask that question? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a lot of the stuff that happens at like crazy where I work is a lot of native guys. Oh, man. Like, She's one guy kidding. freaking threw She's water kidding. at me. And really? I was so mad. I was like, if I wasn't at work, like, <laughs> <laughs> you don't even know what would go down right now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's rough. <clears throat> what about you, Nate? Shit, I should to think, man. I don't know. I really don't know. I think I got one here. Um, this happened, I don't know, it was a while back. Probably, like, April or March or something like that. But I used to hang out with this girl, like, back in the day. Like, long time ago like we have history together like long long time ago and so she was going to be in town so she hit me up <clears throat> and then we were going to go hang out which we did and she's clearly something fucked up in her life like she's all on meth and it's all bad but <laughs> you know i was like all right you know whatever she's my friend do i know her I don't this not this not that's like yeah. <laughs> i don't think i don't think you do okay. i don't think you do she's from rose boys oh, um you might have met her before, though. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. But anyways, so we go hang out, and um, we're, like, shooting pool, and I remember I took a snap of her uh, shooting pool or whatever, and then I never got so many snaps back in my life of everybody being like, dude, what the fuck? <laughs> like, because it was just oh my God. obvious, I guess. Yeah. And <clears throat> we go down. We're playing pool, and then we go to... I don't know, we're just bar hopping around, having fun and stuff, and go back to my place, and she... uh gets nude which i'm okay with i'm like all right that's what's up <laughs> and then uh chilling. yeah she starts like dancing and doing all this other shit and i'm like all right cool and then all of a sudden <laughs> and then she starts fucking crying and i'm like oh what's going on now and then she goes she reaches in her bag and pulls out like a pair of panties out of her like fucking bag or whatever goes to my sink and starts washing her panties and she's crying and I'm like what is happening right now like what is going on and then like where did this take a left turn at and then um and then I was like are you okay what's going on and she was just like leave me alone leave me alone and I was like okay and then she fucking washed her panties put them on and then fucking yeah and fucking walked out what and the then fuck? I was like, I, her buns were yeah, <laughs> and, and it was like March or April too, so it wasn't like super warm out yet. And then um, I I sat there for like five minutes, and I was like, I wonder what this bitch is doing. So like, I fucking walked outside, and I seen she was just marching down the street. So I was like, all right, that's good. This bitch is gone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That is so weird. Did you hear from her after that? No, but I did see her 
when I did uh, that show in Sturgis, that mm-hmm. Tech Nine show, I saw her from the stage. Like I was on stage and I seen her and I pointed to her in the crowd. This <laughs> <laughs> is with like a Phil Collins. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. pointed at her like, yeah, bitch. Yeah, how's <laughs> them panties? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I hope you got clean ones on yeah. this side. <laughs> well, I seen her from the stage, and then uh, I I thought I'd bump into her after the show, but I didn't. Um, luckily, because I don't know what I would have said to her. But oh my gosh! But yeah, yeah. <laughs> I had to unfollow her. Like, on what Facebook were people that. saying though? Whenever they were just like, dude, what are you snap? doing? And then like, um, like, like, why are you hanging out with this girl or whatever? And then, so I always had to, I had to go like, well, you know, I used to know this girl. We used to hang out a lot back in the day, and blah blah blah. And I had to like the full spiel. And then one of my other friends snapped me a, a photo of her that somebody else had taken and snapped, and it said like. Not that much meth or something like that. While oh she was God. like, she was like playing video poker or fucking something like that, and I was like, oh, that's insane, dude. That is meth. Oh, cause <clears throat> she like was playing video poker on Facebook and it was like carried away. No, like she was. We were. I think we were at uh, the uppercut or something, uh, and um, she was playing video poker and must have just been twitching out so bad that like somebody felt the need to like obviously notice that that's <laughs> yeah. insane so that's game <clears throat> shit <laughs> you always run into like the weirdest <clears throat> girls oh my god mm, I don't know it's just the thing for you I don't know let me <laughs> let me track the crazy <laughs> yeah. sad life that's what it is something that is sad life <laughs> <laughs> it was rugged <laughs> but yeah that's yeah, the, it, yeah, that was my resiest shit of 2018. <laughs> I, don't, I don't actually even have one, man. <clears throat> my life's been so boring. Yeah, here's well, that's married life. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's a good thing. Be happier. Someone should Lord. Someone should comment one of their resiest times of For 18. Real. Right. <laughs> <See that>. Yeah, <clears throat> I don't know, but yeah, it's fucking. But I want to add that to the show. Um, We'll just keep every it going. show. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't necessarily have to be our stories. It could be like someone else. Oh, yeah, because on that post, I'll have to go back and find that post. But there was a lot of fucking stupid ones. It was on insane. There. <laughs> yeah. Dude, it was common. That post is blowing yeah. up. Yeah, for sure. Should have went. I'm surprised it ain't viral. You know. Yeah, it was funny. I'm surprised you didn't get thrown into <clears throat> Facebook jail over that one. Man, yeah, there were some good ones. I was like going through reading some and I was like, oh my god. Yeah, we were supposed to do that at the Flanchu Power, huh? Yeah, 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 we were gonna do that. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, that one didn't work out or whatever, but good times. Yeah, yeah whatever. <clears throat> <laughs> it's like, calm down over there, Nate. <laughs> yeah. We were supposed to ball out. <laughs> so, <yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> that was not me. <laughs> We supposed to be ballers. I was like, "Oh, you guys think you're balling, huh?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, we, we did anyway. Room. But we're doing this. We're gonna go eat the buffet. Yeah, <laughs> we didn't do none of that shit. <laughs> no. You guys think you have the buffet? Fuck no. Me. I got an Indian taco. Yeah, you got an Indian taco. We uh got there too late, I think. Mm. But whatever. I thought you had like a set schedule. Not well, you, you guys, guys blew it up because yeah, after you guys fucking bailed out. Like, yeah, then we were like, "Fuck it, then." Just wing it. What are, what is life at this Why point? Why do I like yeah, get what is life? into this? Just kidding. Yeah, like, I was gonna be. Why there. should we even do this anymore? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just gave up on life. <laughs> yeah. So we so got. But it was still fun though. Yeah, that show was the shit actually. Mm-hmm. So it was a good time. Um, yeah, everything that whole trip. Somehow my friend Buck, my friend Buck from <laughs> back home. Fucking showed up out of nowhere. Is that the one passed on that trip? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I had yeah, to take yeah. that. I had to take that picture down because his mom really messaged me like, "Oh man, like you should take that picture down of my son." So I was like, "All Ouch. right." <laughs> but yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I was like um, very nervous to that show. Like, I mean, being it's a small, you know, small little town or whatever, and so I was asking if it's been a. Um, how it's been promoted and whatnot, and there was like social media mo- mainly. So I was kind of like, "Damn, there's not gonna be nobody here." But it's you artists. get nervous over little crowds. Yeah, it's like nobody's gonna be here, and I'm like, "Shit, I'm just gonna have to perform in front of other artists," you know. And I'm like, 
Usually that's not cool at all, but I mean... <laughs> I was going to say, I'm sure the, they're not at all hypercritical or... <laughs> you know what I mean? <clears throat> and then I was going on second, you know, which is still early, you know, and I'm like, fuck. But they, they, they were actually into it. Like, the crowd at first was like, you know, too cool, but they once they... It's usually how I am. <laughs> and, and then once we got going though yeah it was fucking live as fuck in there man yeah, yeah it, was, it was good I had two chicks was, doing the worm oh yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. he did yeah. yeah. <laughs> Gabe did they was having a worm off <laughs> <laughs> worm oh, off worm. <laughs> yeah, I never seen a worm off you, know, but. you didn't plan you <laughs> yeah. yep now you did yeah. I'm glad you let off. me be part of that <laughs> I think that I think that's where I met Nightshield. For the doing first the worm. Oh, uh, you did yeah, the worm too. Yeah, doing the worm in Flandreau. No, I, I no. do remember the first time we were up there for somebody's birthday party, and um, I'm pretty sure Robin did the worm though. Yeah, that, that's she what, usually did. That's how the shit started. <laughs> no way, really? <laughs> Every that's, time. That's how that shit started because I was like, I used to hang out with this chick that fucking did the worm here in Flandreau. Yeah. Like anybody else can do the fucking worm, and then that's. Fucking sure enough. Dude, yep. he was it out. <laughs> well, well, one did it. You know they all practice yeah. together. One, yeah. one did it, you know, and then the other one came out like, Psh, I can do it better. Type, <laughs> type attitude. And yep. Threw the flare in it as she did yep. it all. I was like, I'm like okay. <laughs> For real worm, huh? Yeah. Yep. Fuck hilarious. yeah, that shit was dope, though. Yep. Fucking worm. Yeah, that was a fun show. I was kind of blank molding. I bought like a hundred and something dollars worth of alcohol when we left. Fucking. Yeah. Yeah, you had a big ass crate of fucking Coronas. Yeah. I know. I was like, I Two wonder if we just go with Two big ass bottles of Crown Apple. I was like legit thinking about going with you guys down there, but then I was like, oh, and then I'm going to have to spend the night with them. <laughs> was some, I'm was not fun, trying though. to get my own room. It was it was a fun night. It was. I don't really remember much of what happened after the show, but yeah, it was good. It usually happens that way. Yeah. It was good uh, I mean, too. I, I made me a, a big ass drink, sat down, and I was talking to my buddy, and I'm, I, I don't remember passing out or nothing. <clears throat> Woke up, TV's on, and I'm laying in the bed, like, <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck happened? <laughs> Drink still sitting there. <laughs> yeah, holy <clears throat> fuck. Good times. <laughs> so we got uh, <clears throat> my homeboy Talon's gonna be calling here in a second. Um, <clears throat> Talon's pretty dope. He's a hip hop artist himself or whatever. And, um, raps under the name uh, Basil. But I did a show with him in um, <clears throat> in Philadelphia. He brought me out to Philadelphia a few years ago, and we did that show and. Um, I, I can't remember where he was going to school at. It's, it's an Ivy League school. I'm stupid, so clearly I don't remember, but I'm sure he'll be able to tell us all about it. But, um, <clears throat> but yeah, he did a lot of cool things and then moved back to the res and opened up a studio that, um, you know, he's opened up for the youth, basically, um, nice. of the tribe. And I wanted to talk to him about that because I feel like that's something really cool and he's like really out there like just changing kids lives yeah that's like, awesome actually you know like I can't imagine you know what because you know you, when you're on the res you're doing all kinds of dumb shit and you know to have an outlet like that available to you that you could just go to instead of say maybe like going and, and there are so many <coughs> kids that <coughs> oh, rap it? Oh, yeah. Sing, when I was a young like, yeah right, right? So. yeah yeah, Hell yeah. <coughs> The grind wouldn't be so hard. <laughs> <laughs> give him an outlet. Give him something else to do. Yeah, so, for real. Yeah. So, he'll be joining us here in a second to talk to us about that. Yeah, that's actually. Awesome, I seen but. your post the other day of that guy what? saying thank you and like. Oh yeah. How amazing you are. Yeah, that was. I mean, I get a. I don't want to brag, but I mean, I get a couple oh. of like that or whatever. But I feel like. <laughs> Like, that was, like, cool because, like, he, like, checked in, like, you know, he sent that post, and then, like, two years later, he was, like, you know, sent, a, not, like, an update on it or whatever. That was cool. That was And I was, I like, like, yeah, that, that was pretty, <clears throat> that was pretty sweet. Yeah, shit is. <clears throat> um, but, yeah, just getting posts like that or messages like that every once in a while, it's just, like, all right, cool, there's people out there, like, listening, and it really, uh, because sometimes you'll be doing stuff and you're like does, do, is, any, is anybody even listening to this shit like, like does anybody really even lyrics. fucking care yeah um <clears throat> so I don't know but yeah when you get stuff like that it makes you 
Like, all right. Yeah, all right, fuck it. I'm going to keep going. <laughs> yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Yeah. So that was cool to see. I don't know. Oh. <clears throat> yeah. So. <laughs> so call in. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I just know. I just thought we're gonna be calling here in a second, so <coughs> we'll be good here. <laughs> we will be good. I can go fucking net neti pot my nose again. Jesus Christ! You ever do that? What? No. What the neti pot? What? Oh, it's That's why I was worst. like, gross. What? What is it? Because I know what it is. Yeah, it's but I've terrible. Never done it. It's like a nightmare. Explain it. <laughs> here he is. Hello. Mm. Yo, this is Talon. Hey, what's up, man? How you doing? Good, how are you? Good, good. Can you hear us okay? Yeah, yeah. All right, right on. Well, thanks for calling, Talon. Um, I gave you a little bit of intro. I don't know if you were watching the live stream or not, but uh, if you want to maybe uh, give us a little bit of your background and tell us you know, where you're from and that kind of stuff. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, so, hello, everyone. My name is Talon Bazil. I go by Bazil. Um, I'm 25 years old. Uh, Eagle Butte and Fort Thompson are kind of like the closest things to home for me. Um, I'm a rapper. Uh, and then I run Bona Watch Day Studios, uh, which is why I'm here today to talk a little bit about. But, yeah, um, just make music and then try to help other people make music and that's about it these days. Where where did you go to college at? <clears throat> uh, I went to the University of Pennsylvania. I graduated in 2015 with a bachelor's in psych um, out there in Philadelphia. That's awesome. Yeah, that's cool. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That goals. I know. <clears throat> when I was out there, I was really impressed, um, you know, with what you were doing out there just in the community of natives that were out there and stuff, too. That was really awesome to see, so... Yeah, that's dope. Yeah, man, it was cool to bring you out. That was like, I remember uh, when I got there, it, when I first got, like, first of all, I didn't know that Penn was an Ivy League, like, when I applied. I didn't know until, like, my second week out there, like, when I was already in class, <laughs> like, what it, was, what it all was and what it all meant. Yeah. And, and like, honestly, I just wanted to get through it. Like, I didn't care really about anything. I just kind of wanted to get in and get out. But as things started kind of unfolding and like stuff started happening one of the big like dreams that just came from like a facebook post was i think i was sharing like random like live videos all the time of you or frank Juan when he was uh, branching out from nake nula at the time uh defi and a lot of other artists that like i've always just listened to and looked up to and um and soon that because of like the resources that were there it became like a goal like a dream and then a goal and then it finally happened of like bringing you guys all of what i considered to be like um like some of to me like like some of the pioneers and my big like natives or just in general hip-hop idols because to me that was the your guys's music was all the shit that i related to so much as a kid and like as like a young adult or whatever like growing up you know in Eagle View and then Fort Thompson and wherever else I was um like it was awesome to see you guys like out there in Philly and like to bring you guys out there at that like it was it was all cool man those were good times hell yeah man that was awesome thanks for uh yeah thanks for bringing us out there that was a good that was a good trip um <clears throat> so tell us a little bit about this uh, studio, how you started it up, and what was, like, how did you come up with this idea? Yeah, um, I mean, I think, in a sense, I always wanted to do something uh, for my community that kind of, like, helped progress, not, like, not, like, culture and, like, the kind of traditional sense that's always thrown around a lot, but it just, like, to bring something there, like, that that I knew that I was interested in and that would make me happy. So like growing up over here in Fort, um, they have the Lodestar Casino and then outside they have like this kind of run down stage now where it's, you know, it's outdoors and usually they just have country bands and stuff playing there. And I would walk around there as a kid, I was making 
you know, mixtapes at like 15 and 16 and just passing out CDs. And the days where you could just like burn CDs and just pass them out yeah. and people would actually listen to it. <laughs> and um, I would walk by that stage like <clears throat> outside all the time and I wanted to perform there. And I think the inception of like just wanting something at home like came from that because I was like, wouldn't it be great if like the community was more accepting of like our art and like things that we want to do and like the stuff that we want to make as opposed to just like kind of trash us all the time and instead like celebrate like us celebrating each other and, and stuff like that. But it kind of came from that. And as I went into college and wondering like what, what I want to do with life and everything, um, the more I made music, the more I kind of wanted to, I don't know, like, wanted to kind of help other people. Cause people start coming up to me about, you know, well, what do you use to record? How do you do this? And how do you do that? And for me, I never knew how to answer it because my stuff was always real low grade, low quality. Like, I didn't know what I was doing. Like, I didn't go to school for it. Um, and, like, I, if anything, like, I would just, like, Google everything, like, you know, how to EQ a vocal or whatever. And so when I got back home after graduating and uh, working out in Philly for a little bit, um, out there, I recorded this album called St. John's Wart. And that was really the first, like back in 2017. And that was really the first time I had like been in a real, real professional like studio environment where, you know, you're buying your time, you're, you know, going up next to different artists who are all recording in line and, um, you know, paying, you know, top dollar for what you hope, you know, will be like a professional sound of like your stuff or, you know, good mixing and mastering. And being in that environment, you know, alongside of, you know, the different like red studios and bedroom studios that I've been in. And then even, you know, um, Frank Juan recorded an album for me and that's still set to release. Like, uh, I don't know when, but being in all those environments and settings and then picking up what I learned along the way, especially watching, you know, the studio engineer for St. John's Wart do his thing and seeing like how he did things and how, you know, it was all set up. It made me think, well, what if like, you know, I, I stand by the strong belief that, like, our communities, like, especially out here in South Dakota, like, there's a lot of talent. And if it was just, like, invested in and not just, like, exploited and, like, transformed to be what everybody wants, it would be, like, so cool and, like, so helpful, not just for, like, the artists to get their, you know, music out there and stuff, but for them to actually be given that space and, like, respect to bring their music and all that out there. Um, so, you know, I came back here with that, like in, I, th I want to say mid to late 2017, and then tried to make it happen in Eagle Butte, but it just didn't click. And then the housing authority in Crow Creek over in Fort Thompson, um, the director approached me about, you know, what would it take, you know, to do a studio around here? And I was like, really? He's like, yeah. So I just kind of gave him a list of equipment and they gave me a, you know, a small budget for it. Well, went out there to Sioux Falls and grabbed the stuff like in October. And then we opened up shop in November and just kind of been doing open sessions ever since. That's awesome, man. Um, so how, how do like, how do somebody book time there? Uh, really? Like <clears throat> right now we, I do the Mondays and Wednesdays, 4.30 to 7.30, just open session. So whoever comes in uh, and, like, you know, if no one's recording at the time, they can just go ahead and, like, if they have a beat already, they can use that. Or if they want to talk to me about what kind of music they want to make and then maybe we can figure out a way to get to get to it. Because, like, in college, I still have, like, like two or 300 beats that are just not used. So they could choose from that, too. And um, so we have the open sessions, but then I've been telling people, too, if they just email me or message me on Facebook, they can, you know, book a private session if, you know, they already have, like, an album figured out or, you know, for those who already kind of have a solid idea. Yeah. Um, they could just do it that way. Like, right now, um, when I can, I try to go over to 
one of the elders in the community who's telling stories about Iktomi and wants them recorded and um, just doing like two stories a session there in his home. And so like even setting up in other people's homes if they want that level of comfortability and like that's just something they want, then that's out there. Or, you know, um, as long as it's in the time of when the telecom building in Fort Thompson's open and they want a session for it and I can make it down there, um, then, you know, we could set it up that way. That's cool. So are you like the only engineer that's like in there uh, working or do you have other people helping you with that? Uh, pretty much it's just me. Um, like it, it kind of sucks right now. We're, we're still kind of building. Um, the room we're using right now isn't really that well acoustically treated. Uh, I mean, I wasn't looking for anything extremely professional quality either. And I don't try to play that off at all, but um, you know, we're working with, you know, limited space, kind of limited time. Um, and then it also just kind of depends on, you know, when I could be available. Cause I'm, yeah, I'm the only one right now. Yeah. Um, How, what, uh, what, um, um, <clears throat> software do you use? Right now I just use Acoustica Mixcraft. It's the thing that I know best. Uh, Acoustica Mixcraft 8. Um, they've kind of made some like updates recently that I think just kind of work um, for what I want and for what I'm comfortable with. If they, I always tell them, like whoever comes in, especially the younger ones who want to learn more about production and stuff, I definitely make sure they know about like, you know, more of like Logic and Pro Tools and yeah. all of those other softwares and for them to like look into it and not just stick with what I'm using because it's definitely not <laughs> what a lot of the other studios are using. Mm -hmm. I think one of the studios I was working with in Philly like laughed at me when I said I was using Acoustica <laughs> Mixcraft. But, but like that's legit since like 2006 or seven, I've been using Acoustica Mixcraft like at each update. And they're getting better, but um, I think I've just gotten so used to it that I, I figured out like what works for me and how to make it sound as clean as I can with that software. So that was kind of my next question was, is as you're going along, do you teach teach your students how to use the uh, software or? Yeah, um, and that's actually what I like about open studio sessions so much for is like, I can have one person recording and like who's totally honed in on just performing the track and trying to get them comfortable like out of that shy zone of, you know, doing the vocals monotone or not the way that they envisioned it and getting them out of that. And then at the same time, I got uh, my laptop in front of me and then I have a monitor next to me. So for anyone else who's there and people can just come in and write or chill and listen to music or whatever. Like I try to make it like an open space like that. So whoever's there and it's usually like, um, I got a couple of regulars now and they vary around the age from like 13 to mid to late twenties. So there'll be different people around that monitor. And while they're there, I'll just straight up show them, you know, um, some of the EQing that goes on and setting up the tracks and then um, the different things that I may do to the vocal, like with compression, and then once the song's done with or complete, then mastering it and mixing it. Um, like, I, I give them what knowledge that I have, like, thus far, so that way they at least have those basic kind of tools um, if they want to go home and do it themselves later. And then one of the things we've been trying to get more into recently, um, but it's a little hard to make time for right now, is really sitting down and going over beat making, because that's probably what I'm most comfortable in, like more so than any type of sound engineering, just basic beat making, sampling, and um, like sequencing of different songs and layering like that. Um, that's probably what I'm most comfortable in when it comes to like teaching. So I try to do that too, um, but you know, with like six hours out of a week, it, I didn't expect it, but like um, you end up needing like way more time, oh, yeah. but it, oh, yeah. it's cool because you know, it keeps them coming. Yeah, yeah. 
That's awesome, man. Do you, so, like, um, how many people would you say you've, like, recorded songs for now in the area? Um, let me say, I want to say, like, nine or ten uh, different people. And the cool thing about it, too, is uh, it. I was really hoping for, like, a diverse, like, genre of, you know, artists. And it's definitely been that. So we released actually one, like, um prayer song cd project um both on youtube and then uh making cd copies for those who want it um uh of just you know prayer songs from the guy who actually gave us our name uh um he uh had still has a bunch of songs that he wants to do for you know for future volumes but you know we have stuff like that and more traditional singing um (laughs) we got a couple rappers a uh, couple of them that just want to make beats solely. Um, and then uh, one or two storytellers. I'm trying to think off the top of my head. Um, one R&B singer who's actually going to be using our studio pretty soon here. Um, and we're just like waiting to get things scheduled out for that. Um, but, you know, I, I would give or take like, Maybe 10, 12 at the most. Right on that. Uh, Mix, I want to hear the native R&B singer. There, You hear rappers all the fucking time, but you never hear any native R&B <laughs> singers. Yeah. That would be awesome. Yeah, there needs to be more of that. I mean, yeah, I could I'll do it. put out an R&B album. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Like, Especially today, like, there's so many. Yeah. Um, but uh, Wombly Chea is one who's um, still getting things scheduled and figured out for when he's going to come down and record his album over here, I think, in the next like month or so. Yeah. Um, and it's supposed to be like his debut album. He sent me a couple like demos and rough mixes, and then I've sent him back like edits and things like that. So we're getting all that worked out just for now, just to get uh, like a rough idea. But um, he's one of them. And then... One that actually may be happening tomorrow is um, I have an uncle named, uh, we all call him G, but uh, Gerald Zephyr. He's one of the uh, founders of the Bad Nation Singers Drum Group. Um, He approached me online and was saying he wants to do like a 90s style because he comes from more like the 80s, 90s era of like that style of R&B. He's like, I want to record that type of shit stuff yeah and i yeah. said well I, like let's do that shit i want to do that too but i'm not gonna do it i'll just record you doing it <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's awesome i always wanted to work out me and maniac do like some like like the 90s r&b like dance steps on stage you know where like uh you'd be doing like oh the synchronized God. dancing or whatever you should do it for your birthday <laughs> 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 i want to see more of dr Punctavius. like dr Punctavius <laughs> should just have his own like dedicated ep where yeah. you just like it's like the baddest like funkiest beats ever yeah. and then just him talking over it yeah. <laughs> the song never but actually like started nine minutes each song yeah <laughs> yeah There's no song we always wanted to to do a, a Dr. Funktavious like a full song of that but we never I don't know we never got to it but <laughs> one of these times that would be fun <laughs> Dr. Funktavious yeah and I and honestly like on that note too I don't know why it reminds me of it but I think that was what I was most excited about when it came to doing this studio is giving complete creative and like unedited control to whatever artist or whoever comes in. Because I mean, with and and speaking of like, you know, how many native rappers there are and stuff, I think the popularization and more so the acceptance and like fetishization of like native rap has made it to where it's so like i don't know it it put like a huge value on like um being like correct and formal and like accepted by everybody like a thing you know what i mean yeah like to where it's very like i mean you you've been in those you remember those like days where like there'd be a show in rosebud and I remember one where this lady, like, it was for one of Frank Wan's events, and I was just performing, like, three songs in it, no big deal. Like, it was just a quick set. But before I go on, like, 
10 seconds before I go on, the lady comes up to me and she says, okay, you, you have this much time, blah, blah, blah. If we hear one curse word come out of your mouth, your CD is going to be ejected and you'll be forced off the stage. <laughs> have a good show. <laughs> that, that's why they don't invite me to those shows. <laughs> What's that? So that's why they don't invite me to those shows. Right? And, like, <laughs> I think that's so, like, counterintuitive to what they want to do. Yeah. Because for kids like me, and keep in mind, I'm, like, one of the kids who did what they wanted me to do, which was go to college and all that shit. But uh, for me, the most helpful shit was yours and Maniacs. Yeah. So by taking out all of, like, the, you know, quote-unquote bad words and, you know, wrong themes or whatever, they're also taking out, like, an aspect of reality that exists like there's it's not like like it, it's so like ironic to me and like fucked up that there's meth and all this kinds of shit on the reses but in a community event we're more worried about curse words right yeah exactly that was always my and shit like, too, man. yeah <laughs> good good oh no i was i was just agreeing with you yeah it's much bigger problems than people swearing on stage but yeah yeah and i think even so like they should be asking us as, like, artists to say the most, like, offensive and crazy shit about the rest, so that way it's at least acknowledged. And, like, for those kids who have to see that stuff, they don't feel like it's so bad anymore. Because I would listen to... I mean, I love, like... I, I always bring up Maniac, because he seriously was, for me, like, a big inspiration. And as, a, like, a kid listening to music, it was like so inspiring for me growing up there in Eagle Butte because I was like, yeah, that shit sounds like Dark Side. I feel like um, with his music, I felt like our way of life was like represented like in a way where it wasn't exploited. It wasn't like, you know, um, really, you know, shined up and made special for other people to understand. It was like, fuck you and fuck you if you don't get it. Like, you know, this is where we come from and this is how it is, you know, walking down the street where we're at. And like, and for me, it was in my, it was in my CD players and everything for the longest. And not only like the shit talking songs, but the ones where he was telling stories, like all that he passes yeah. about, you know, the army vet and um, all the other song topics he had to me, like, yeah, it was raunchy and it was raw. And not all of it you were supposed to agree with, but it was real. And so, like, for the studio, I walked into it, you know, knowing, like, okay, I got this, like, you know, this um, support and stuff from the tribe for doing this, but if they ever asked me to, like, take a song down just for the fact that, you know, a kid said something fucked up or something that none of us agree with or whatever, I'm not going to do it. And so I tell each one of the artists that come through there, like, I don't know what you have to say, but just say it. And I promise you, not only am I going to, like, whether I agree with it or not, not only am I going to release it and edit it and make it sound as best as I possibly can for you, but if anyone tries to um, say that it, that you shouldn't be making that type of art, I'm going to defend your ass to the end for it. Because, I mean, for me, like, it, it was weird, you know, being in those college atmospheres, especially where they're telling me, like, they would tell me all the time in Philly, basically, um, you know, tell us your story, but, you know, please give us, like, a trigger warning about what that story is and, you know, how you frame it to us and what all you tell us. Like, they wanted to exploit you, but, like, have you also, like, filter out that exploitation for them? And I just never agreed with it. it like, if anything, it broke my heart, like, in the early years, and it made me, like, a jaded-ass, like, artists where I was like, are you getting me for this show because you like my music or because I feel a quota? Yeah. And that sucked. Yeah. But, but, you know, I wanted to at least take that and what I learned from all that and really focus it as I do my own music on the side, um, something to at least come in there with that perspective so I was like okay that that was kind of the main thing I had confidence in when it came to doing the studio was not so much my expertise or what I knew but more so like just the fact that I knew that no matter what I was going to 
defend and um, honor like whatever song comes through that door. Hell yeah! Right on, man. Yeah, I mean, how else would they learn? You know, yeah. Keep them, keep them on that right path. Freedom of speech is so important nowadays. It feels like, you know, even shit that you know gets brought up like 10 years ago like with that Kevin Hart uh, Oscar shit and like all that uh, all the shit is just so silly nowadays it's important for you know people forget the freedom of speech and you know whether you like it or not people are you know able to speak their mind you know you don't always have to agree with it or you know understand it but you should at least have that ability yeah, yeah exactly or, or even just that respect of you know who that person is first like and and what they've been through like all of my like um like dearest mentors were ones you know that understood me and the only way that they could was you know being from that same place and experiencing some of that stuff um one uh the guy who actually has that um who gave us the name which means in Lakota um uh, music as a way of healing not just for the people hearing it but for the people making it for the people around it doing it all in a healing way, way no matter where it comes from or what it's about because that like not just like saying that and then making sure everything's like you know taken as a medicine but more so like no matter what you say it's benefiting somebody even if it's some evil ass shit like you know i grew up listening to necro and all that and none of it was like, you know, keep your head up or whatever. It was <laughs> just what it was, and it got me through. Yeah. So, like, yeah, and, like, what that person said who gave us the name is, he was telling me, he was like, you know, you're going to have a lot of, like, youth come up to you, which you already do, he said, but always keep in mind that when you talk to them, you give a little piece of yourself each time. And that's how you gain their trust and their respect and, like, their... um their um their willingness to like open up and things like that about that stuff because you know in order for you to acknowledge that truth you gotta like show it too like you gotta be like okay you know uh when i was in philly you know i was in a deep rut and depression and i was depending on a lot of like different things and sometimes substances to get me by and that's just the fucking reality of it and when i came home some of that came with me too and I just had to deal with the consequences of it. Here's what they were. Here's, you know, what I think you need to hear out of it, given what you may, or given what you've told me and all that. And just being real about it. Uh, I've tried to be like that with my music, no matter how many people listen, and with my whatever art I'm doing, no matter how many people look at it and say, oh, that's cool. Like, because I'll listen to some of the stuff today, and I don't, mean to trash anybody or anything but it's real that it's out there where it's like you can clearly tell that people are making stuff because they know that that's the thing that's going to pop off yeah. and be like like listened to and shared and all that and made like articles out of and I didn't want to do that I just wanted to like like help myself and then put something out there that had that same reality that you know guys like you and maniac and everybody else put out there that had that same reality in it as well it just in my own way you know what i mean yeah man for sure like i always tried to i remember like making back when like broken dreams came out and like that was like a super big song at the time and uh, like everybody was like looking for me to go like down that path that everybody wanted me to go down where it was like you know, come do this and you can, you know, go over and do all these shows across seas and, you know, be our, like, native stereotype spokesman person for this and that. And I was like, I'm going to just take the hardest right turn I can and go sex, drunks, and hip-hop and go as far away from that direction as possible. Um, right, right. Yeah, so, yeah, it was, it was, yeah, that, I, I know exactly what you're talking about and it was just, yeah, I always wanted to... And- and the thing is, bro, is people like me were the most happy to hear you do that shit. Yeah. Like, I think it was, like, wasn't that, like, sometime after Broken Dreams, wasn't that around the time Sex, Drunks, and Hip Hop came out, the first one? Yeah, like, so, uh, Broken Dreams came out on Loved and Hated in 2007, and then, like, it really blew up in, like, 2007, 2008, and then Sex, Drunks, and Hip Hop came out in 2009. That was my next album after that. Right. Yeah. And that 
that was the stuff where I remember hearing that, and that was, I was, because uh, I started doing the radio show, and I think that was when I first started reaching out to you, like, more, yeah. um, when I did the radio show in Philly, in, like, 2011, and so I think that came out, and, like, I fell in love with that one, and then Sex, Drunks, and Hip Hop 2 came out, and I swear, like, I, the main songs that were playing was, like, I would close my show with Hyphy. <laughs> and it was because, like, out of all the Dr. Fucktavious ones, that was the one where he just said, like, the craziest shit in there. Where, yeah. um, and remember, if it don't smell good, it, <laughs> it's probably not funky enough for you, baby. And, like, and, like, all these people, all these Ivy Leaguers in, like, this PC culture would tune into my show. And that would be the song I would close out with. <laughs> and like, <laughs> and I loved just getting that reaction. But then also because I remember people would approach me at first because they knew I was doing a native hip hop show in Philly and whatever and have that preconceived notion because that's when uh, it started getting a little more like censored. And they would kind of see what I was about and they'd go, oh, like, it's good he's in school, but you, I don't know. And then, like, I wouldn't hear from him again for a while. <laughs> like, it was the greatest, man. I loved that shit because I honestly feel like, and it, it's why, like, when it comes to all that, I really feel for Frank because he's one of the people who's actually, like, just being honest yeah. about himself, like, in his music and all that. And he's just kind of doing what he wants to do. And I think people sometimes even take advantage of that and exploit that into making it what they want. And since it, like, it worked, then, like, so many people are, like, faking it. Like, they don't have skeletons in their closet or something. Yeah. Yeah, man, for sure. For sure. Um, well, we got to wrap this up here soon. So we definitely appreciate you stopping through and i mean you're definitely changing changing kids lives out there man for real like you're gonna be one of those people in like five six years man that people are gonna look back on and be like if it wasn't for talent in that studio you know who knows what would have happened in my life you know so yeah you're doing a good thing yeah yeah man oh man well thank you guys and thank you for having me on too i mean this is just something that i really like doing like for once in a long time like uh, even you know, comparing it to being in Philly and stuff, like, I'm genuinely happy about something that I'm doing, and, uh, like, I feel really fulfilled with it, and I'm just happy to, like, keep doing it, and I hope I can keep it going for years to come, so, Hell yeah. just, just thank you for the exposure, because I know the artists that I have coming in, too, you know, they, they love it, and they're gonna, like, it's gonna really make them that much more confident and, like, willing to come in and, you know, get out of that shy zone that they may be in or, you know, whatever may be going on. Yeah. It's, right definitely, on. it's definitely a game changer. I know that much. Mm -hmm. I mean, For definitely sure. setting some standards. Yeah, we're going to close the I just show. hope that... Oh, oh yeah, sorry, sorry. Oh, I, yeah, God, I'll, I'll talk when you're done. Uh, I was just going to say, uh, yeah, like, with that, I just hope that other tribes do it, too. Like, I hope other tribes, like, invest and make, like, a serious, like... Um, a serious uh, like um, move towards something more artistic, something more expressive, and something like as free as that. Yeah, man. Yeah, that that is awesome. Maybe yeah, you could. You know, you're a trailblaze trailblazer in uh, Crow Creek, so maybe you can, you know, show them how it's done in other places too, man. You never know where this is going to take you, so. Right on, man. Well, thanks for coming through. Um, you know, we definitely appreciate it, and we'll uh, we'll be playing one of your songs here at the end uh, that was recorded at the studio. And if you ever got anything else that you want to send us, man, um, we're always looking for new music to play. So you know, send stuff over. Oh, for sure, definitely. Thank you. Cool. All right, man. Take it easy. Thank you. You Thank too. You. Thank you. Thank you, guys. All right. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, actually, that is awesome. Yeah. There's nothing there in Port Thompson. Yeah, that's like back whenever I was in high school, um, 
I was in what they called gifted and talented, and it was like video editing and like doing that kind of stuff. And a guy named Jim Bordeaux Jr. ran it, and like without him doing that for me, like um, it wasn't until like a week before I was supposed to go to school that I changed my um, my major from video production to audio production. But um, without him like being there and like helping me, like when I was like you know a kid or whatever. I don't know what I'd be doing at this point without that direction. And so, I mean, he's, you know, talent's certainly going to be changing and influencing people's lives like that down there, and that's awesome that they have that ability to, you know, just do whatever they want to do. Just record music and, you know, that's awesome. Be themselves and have a, a release. Yep. So, yeah, that's great. And, uh, yeah, with that, we will end the show here. We got a song called... Watch Over Me by Bobby J and Royce Howe. It was recorded uh, by Talon at the studio. So these are young native artists on the come up from the Crow Creek Reservation. And you know, we definitely appreciate you guys sticking around with us at the through Facebook and all that. And we will see you guys in a couple weeks. <laughs> Stirring up games. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> With me, Jay Boog, page at the page, rhyme at the rhyme, always on my mind. Any other day, any other night, what do I do? What do I say when I ain't feeling fine? Looking for the truth, looking for a sign. About to give up, so sick of trying. Then I look up into the sky, think about you, then I start crying. Then I miss you, what's the use of trying? Every single time that I sit alone in my room, think about the late night cruising, sparking up a blown or two. Now my little homie gone, man, rest in peace to you. Now, this is what I gotta do when I Boo, when I come through with some new, some new, oh me, always in the rear view, clear view, in the visions up ahead, I'ma do this all for you, that's a bet, I ain't got none to lose, I'ma take every step, every breath, got some to prove, honey proof with the flow, thought you knew, thought you knew, in my own lane, still got my roots, stand in the rain while I rap to you, take the pain away if I ever meet with you, rain a sunny day, still I think about you, no time, ask God why, so I leave it up to you. Production of the Sioux Empire.com.